Hey, how you doing out there in YouTube land? This is Stiletto coming at you from the Wild Wild West. Today, we have another one. Coming from Tactical Edge LLC. Another eBay purchase. So let's get busy. Hope everybody's doing okay out there. Opening up today is my clever girl. Okay, here we go. There it is there. Yes, it's another CRKT. You know how much I love these dead bolts. Let's see how we're going to open this up. Brand new. Comes with all the paperwork. Paperwork I've shown you guys before. I think this one is the one that shows you how the deadbolts assemble. And this is their literature. Com com sort of a little bit comedic. <laughs> <laughs> Always keep your boxes. And here it is. Which one is it? If you don't know, soon you will. I like this much better with this piece being black as opposed to being just an unfinished aluminum. That looks much better to me. As compared to my other seismic. Still haven't really, I forgot to release this video. I've had it for a while. That's my other seismic. This is a comparison. I like this one better. Oh, it's nice. No play, blade play at all. But I have found though, if you play with these a lot, and if you fidget with them too hard, flick them out too hard, should I say, they will start to have a little bit of blade play up and down. I don't think the deadbolt self adjusts. Just something to be aware of. You may not want to play with it too hard if you want to keep your blade solid. See, this one has a little bit of, just a little nick, a little tick. And I think it's the deadbolt that causes it because the deadbolt wears out. It'll start to wear a little bit, which will give you a little bit of up and down play, bit, play, play. Because it's a softer metal, I, I think, than the, than the liners and the, um, and the blade. But I still love it. I still love it. These are so easy to use. Awesome blades. Yeah, we're not talking about that one today. Let's read the specs on this one. Blade length 3.969 inches. Closed length 5.457 inches. Overall length 9.438 inches blade material 1.4116 stainless steel this German corrupt stainless steel blade thickness 0 0.148 inches blade style drop point blade finish black PVD handle material G10 locking mechanism deadbolt pocket clip tip up right carry Weight, three, 6.3 ounces. Designer, Flavio Ecoma. Flavio Ecoma. Flavio Ecoma is the one that designed this, um, the deadbolt lock too. 
These I think feel a little bit better in hand than the Clever Girl. As far as the ergonomics, I like these a little bit better. Some nice looking serrations. Let me wipe the blade off a little bit here. Absolutely love it. I love it. One thing that's nice about this one is that the stainless steel on it is very resistant to corrosion. These, I think I love them knives, had these tested, the, the, the 4116 German Corrupt Steel. And it turned out to be real German Corrupt Steel with a, with a HRC of 55. They claim it has 55 to 56, I think it is. Or 55 to 56 or 57, something like that. And it came out to be 55. And everybody I've seen that uses these on the internet and, and in uh, reviews or whatever, the, the edge actually held up, holds up pretty well. Let's see how sharp it is. Power Mad Headbanger is the one that turned me on to the deadbolt lock. Power Mad Headbanger. Oh yeah, sure. Let's see how the serrations cut. Wow, the serrations are super sharp. Awesome. Awesome. Absolutely love these knives. Let me just pull out all my all my ones that I have. This is my other new Clever Girl that I never used. And this is the one that I've been using. These are going to be my collectors. This is the one that gets used. That's my CRKT collection. These are all my CRKTs. They're the only ones I have. I love the deadbolt. The deadbolt is super easy to maintain. It's super easy to break down and take apart and clean. It's probably one of the easiest knives to easiest lock types to maintain that I've come across for a lock for a locking blade knife. Absolutely love them. I would recommend any of these. These are going for $99 now on the CRKT website, and you also can find them for $90 to $99 or so on the on the website on, on eBay or whatever and other and other places too. This one I got for $90 on eBay. This one I paid I think it was $86 on eBay. And this one, these two came from um, the Knife Center, and both of them were 127. This is the one I got is just to be an extra one to be a collector, be part of my collectors, because I want to have one of each of the ones I like. As you know, I like the bigger blades. I'm not too big on the smaller blades, and then when you have a strong lock like this, I definitely want it on a bigger blade. I like the way this is all blacked out. All the screws and hardware are all blacked out. The, line, the stainless steel liners, it has full stainless steel liners. And on this one, the, the stainless steel liners are exposed. Whereas on this one, they're, in, they're embedded. Oh, wait a minute, no, I'm wrong. I'm thinking of another knife. I'm thinking of another knife. Never mind. These are exposed too. I'm thinking of another knife. knife. Centers up perfectly. A 
But like I said though, if, if if you're real hard on your knives, and if you like, you know, like if you're gonna bang on it and do stuff like that, this lock type is not self-adjusting, so you will wear down the lock a little bit, and you will develop a little bit of up and down play. That's my experience. Now this piece should be e an easy piece to replace. I've I've written CRKT about this one. Let me know it's developed a little bit up and down play, blade play. Now I'm going to see if they're going to send me a new um, deadbolt. This part right here is called the deadbolt. And that's the part you can see a little bit of wear on it. Absolutely love these. Thank you, Power Madhead Banger. Turn me on to a great one here. I loved it so much I had to get four of them. <laughs> Because you never know when somebody's going to stop making something and th these have become highly collectible because these, these are really nice knives. And it's also nice to have the first generation of things too. So you could be one of the OG people that recognized it in the beginning. Awesome. Now let's put these away. Absolutely nice. I love the PVD coating. The PVD coating is nice. I think it's a little bit nicer than the Cerakote. The story has like the same look as the Cerakote coating or even a matte finish DLC coating like that you see on Spyderco's. It's more of a matte finish. It's not a glossy finish like the DLC coating on um, cold steel knives. Very beautiful. Another thing about these two is that they don't say they're made in China or Taiwan. These are all made in Taiwan. I don't see any Taiwan markings on the blade, so it's kind of cool, you know, if you don't want to see Taiwan on your blade. Right here it says seismic. And then it says Ecoma design, US patent number, blah, 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 blah. On this side says C C R K T Columbia River Knife and Tool. Awesome. And then down here has the model number. Right here it says the model number at the base of the blade. And the reason why I know that's the model number because when I wrote to C R K T, they required that I give the model number, and they told me where to find the model number. So that's the model number that you see down here. That number right there. If you ever have a problem with yours, I need to contact CRKT that's what you use is the model number these handles are, are super durable and tough no flex at all well made the only gripe I have about these is that is that the um, handles like especially like on this one and one of these Feels like it needs to be rounded off better right around here in this section of the handle. So I don't know if CRKT sees this or listens to this, watches the reviews on their on their on their knives by uh, by people that that purchase their knives. But I would round this off a little bit better, so it, so it make it more comfortable when you're having bare hand when you're using it barehanded. Because I, I bet you most of us that purchase these knives will be using them barehanded. And uh, I, know, I know that these are de designed for the military and law enforcement when people are usually probably wearing gloves. But a large portion of their, their, the people who are going to be buying these, I think, are civilians. And they're not going to be wearing gloves most of the time. And these aren't that comfortable in hand for a long period of time or even when you're just playing with it. Because it'll start to bother your hand. It bothers my palm right in here. And I think it'd just be better if they just rounded this off. I'm tempted to do it myself, but I don't want to mess with it. I just want to leave it the way it came. I think it's beautiful. They look really beautiful, though. But this is not the most comfortable ha uh, handle. My uh, Cold Steel Tau War is much more comfortable than this in hand. I think the Cold Steel Tau War is probably one of the best handles that I've ever experienced on a folding pocket knife. I like the I like my Recon ones too. The Recon ones are extremely comfortable handle too. 
But this one isn't, but I love the blade. I love the thickness of the blade, the way it's thick all the way throughout. And that's the way all these are, they're thick. So look at the tip on that. I don't know if you can see the tip. Where it starts out thick up here, then it goes down. It's about like 3.84 millimeter thick. And then it comes back out here. It has like a swedge on both sides and thickens back up at the tip. It looks like it's reinforcing the tip. And this one, as opposed to the Clever Girl, it's got a saber grind as opposed to the Clever Girl's hollow grind. Clever Girl has a hollow grind. This is more of a Persian style, I would call it Persian, Persian style blade. It's got an upswept tip. And I don't know what I would call this one. I call it a Akuma blade, <laughs> Flavio blade. Sort of like a reverse Tonto, sort of. I just think it's beautiful. Excellent blade. The clips on these work great. The, the, the clips on them are tight. They're tight like cold steel clips. So, like, I, I've been carrying this one of these. This is the one I think I've been carrying. Yep, that's the one I've been carrying. And the and the clips, the, this one is like, it's real tight like a cold steel clip. It won't fall out your pants. I don't care if you <coughs> have your pants are upside down and they're being sh shaken or whatever, it still won't fall out. So it is a little bit of a pocket shredder. If you were to take, your, take this in and out of your pocket constantly, it probably would wear down your pocket. But, you know, that's the way I like my, my uh, clips to be because I don't like, I ride motorcycles and I don't want it to fall out my pocket when I'm riding down the road. Because a lot of clips, like the spider clip clips on my spider codes and my, uh, what other knives? Spider codes and bench mage, they have sort of loose clips. A little bit too loose for my liking. So loose I don't want to wear the knife if I'm riding a motorcycle. Or carry the knife if I'm riding a motorcycle. I'll, I, I've been carrying this one just about every day. He went to work with me again today. I really shouldn't be taking a big giant blade like this to work. I just don't pull it out. Don't use it in front of anybody. But I just been wanting to see what it's like to carry it all the time. It carries real easy. I forget that it's in my pocket, to tell you the truth. Even though it's 6.9 ounces and this one's supposed to be 6.4. Let's, let's weigh it. Yep, 6.4 ounces. 6.9, should be 6.9. Yep, 6.9. This one, this one has skeletonized um, stainless steel liners, whereas this one doesn't. This one doesn't have skeletonized liners. That might be the weight difference. And th this one also has a little bit bigger and thicker uh, G10 scales. I don't know, I guess they're about the same thickness. Very cool. This one doesn't have a lanyard hold. This one, this one has lanyard holes. So if you want to apply, you know, clip on a lanyard, you can do it on this one. You can't do it on this one. I'm not a lanyard person anyway, so I don't really trip on that. I know a lot of you guys, guys and gals, are you do like your lanyards. And this would be better for this one. The cool thing about this one to me, the reason why I wanted both of these, is that this one's D2. And this one's the, the German Corrupt Steel. German Corrupt Steel is often used for cutlery, kitchen cutlery, and it's highly resistant to corrosion. So this one would be hard to rust, especially with this PVD coating. That one's not going to rust. It, you know, you have to leave it in some moisture for a long period of time, probably before, you know, maybe salt water or something before it starts rusting. But uh, this one, I would never have to worry about it rusting. So if I'm ever in a, if you're ever into an area that's, humid highly humid or has a lot of moisture or near the ocean or something like that probably one of these would be better for you because you wouldn't have to worry about corrosion issues as jumping on the on the back and that's about it
a little bit of jumping back here on the, on the, um, what do you call it? On the backspacer. This one, the jumping for this one is pretty much the scales. The scales are your jumping. And it has, and you can feel it all the way around. I think it's a little bit too rough around here and under here. You adjust these with a detent screw. So T6 right there, the shiny screw. I don't know if you can see that, that right there. That's how you adjust your de detent. You use a T6 to adjust your detent. The pivot screws are T8. And the pocket, slip, pocket clip screws, I think, are T8 also. I've never taken off the pocket clip. It said that it's only right side carry, but it looks like you can carry, you can switch this over to the left side too. Both of these are like that. I highly recommend these. Thank you, Powerhead Banger. Absolutely love it. This one feels to me better in hand. It feels lighter. The balance is perfect on it. Whereas this one's a little bit more handle heavy. I gotta come way back here. And I think it's because it has the solid liners, the unskeletonized liners. So the balance is, this one's a little bit more handle heavy than it is blade heavy. This one has a, a more stout blade. It has a saber ground blade instead of a hollow ground blade. So it's more like a, a Tonto. Where Tonto blades are usually heavier than the, the clip blades. And it balances it out just right with the skeletonized handles. This is the one that Flavio made. Flavio Akuma made. This one was designed by Austin McLon. He was a Vietnam, not Vietnam, but a... I think it's Afghanistan vet. He's an army military vet, veteran. That's now a knife maker. Flavio Kuma, he's from Brazil, Brazil. Absolutely love him. This is just gonna be a little short video. This is not gonna be, not, not gonna be a long video. I'm not gonna ramble on forever today. But I just wanna put this one out there, let y'all see him. I've been telling you guys about my uh, my collection of these. All right, that's about it for today. Peace, stiletto. Have a great one. Stay safe.